difference between a dobro and a resonator because a lot of people use that term interchangeably but they're very very different in their um, architecture structure so what's the same well both a resonator and a, uh, a dobro have a spun aluminum cone that looks kind of like a hubcap or a speaker cone just like you'd have inside your uh, speaker cabinet the dobro cone is shaped sunken in and it's called a spider bridge the spider bridge rests on the cone because well it looks like a spider web so this rests on a lip inside the guitar and the ends of the spider rest on the cone the strings go over the bridge on the spider and they resonate and that's where you get that high lonesome cool sound from that so many of you are familiar with in bluegrass music if you're a fan of Jerry Douglas he plays a dobro here is a 1937 national resonator that's in the shop for a neck reset and uh, a lot of other work this is a resonator cone and it looks like a hubcap but it's also a spun aluminum cone and it rests in the lip inside the guitar and there's a biscuit bridge it's called a biscuit because it looks like a biscuit and that's what the strings rest upon when uh, they go up the neck to the peg head and uh, the strings uh, then cause the cone to vibrate this sound is more associated with the Delta Blues, the bottleneck slide blues that uh, you hear played uh, so often. Both guitars uh, are quite often used for their tone, just for regular playing. But the Dobro is more associated with the country bluegrass high lonesome sound of playing. And the um, Resonator is more associated with blues style. So there is a big difference between the two. When we uh, pulled the cone and played off of this guitar uh, we found this dobro doesn't have a round um, recess it's it's oblong which means the original cone was jammed into this space making it really uh, impossible for it to resonate the way it should so before I put the new cone and upgrades into uh, this guitar I gotta take out the router with the rabbiting bit uh, which we're gonna do now to slightly widen the recess right here to make this uh, viable for uh, a new comb. It's always a little nerve-wracking taking something like a router with a rabbiting bit to any kind of a musical instrument because what you take away you can't put back. Anyway, the whole point of this exercise was to uh, widen the rim here where it was oblong and crushing and compressing on uh, the cone. So this cone was damaged in shipment. I've straightened the rim. So if this worked according to plan, this should drop nicely in like that. But anyway, now for everything to resonate properly and not to develop rattles, I've got to make sure this spider is level. So I've got a dead flat aluminum platen holding this spider bridge, not with a lot of pressure, just in place. What I'm doing is tapping to see if any of these spiders are high. So this one's just a little tiny bit high. These are very delicate so you got to be really careful with this. I put a little piece of uh, rubber shim underneath about a sixteenth inch thick and gently press down with my thumb to bend that leg so that it's now contacting. All right. Okay, I've carefully adjusted all the legs of the spider 
and I've been sanding it uh, on this 220 grit paper and I have sanding marks a little flat on each one of these legs. That means now when I install it on the cone and install it in the dobro that everything will have uniform contact and we can count on optimal tone for this cool install row. The cone in a resonator or a dobro is the heart and soul of the tone, just like a speaker is the heart and soul, essential heart and soul of a, a speaker cabinet that you play through. So anyway, um, I've got a few more things to show you about the process that was involved in making this uh, work. And um, uh, so I'm going to try and dust off a few of my dobro uh, licks and uh, play out while uh, uh, we show you these uh, uh, extra photos. So.